the agenda of this session is an introduction to big data and Hadoop. Uh, we'll also understand big data is a very, very wide uh, term. Uh, we'll try to understand what does it mean to all of you, uh, depending upon your background. Say, for example, uh, the if you're a developer, what does what does big data mean to you? If you're a if you're a test engineer, what does that mean to you? If you're an analyst, if you're a project manager, uh, so what does what does actually uh, what is what is there which lies in for you there? So by the end of this session, I think uh, what I'll try to answer first of all is what are the learning various learning paths in big data depending upon your job role and the kind of uh, where do you want to go, right? So what should you learn in big data depending upon your uh, current experience, your career growth, right? So that's what that will be the first part of this session. Your course content, your recordings, your uh, installation guides, the labs, everything is available in your learning management system, right? And then you attend these live sessions, which are scheduled, right? I mean, through this tool itself, go to webinar. In the live session, you you you, it's an interactive session. You can ask questions from the instructor. You can uh, clarify your doubts. After this session, the, these these sessions are recorded, and you get the recordings of your session in the learning management system. I'll, I'll show you a view of that as well at towards the end of this session. Uh, and then post the class, right? Now that you've uh, attended a class. Uh, if you have questions, doubt, queries, there's a 24 by 7 day and night support available. So you can you can just uh, log in a support ticket from your learning management system. An engineer will be assigned to work on that and uh, they'll be happy to help you out with anything over email or even uh, a one to one help is available. Say in case you are uh, stuck with some installation, you're stuck with some code debug, the, the team can help you out. Right. So that's how that's how it uh, works. The support works. Now, uh, then for every course, you have module wise quizzes, assignments you have uh, which you have to take after every uh, after every class to reinforce your understanding. If you are not able to answer something, you can get help. And then uh, once you're done with the uh, complete course schedule, uh, you at the end of the course, you if it's a tech course, you have to do a project right where you can uh, where say for example in this big data course there will be multiple data sets from various domains which will be available in your learning management system and you will pick up one of those or multiple of those and you'll you'll do a uh, project around that that project will be evaluated by our instruction panel which again consists of people from the industry who are experts in this domain and based on that you will be given a review on that project as well as a graded certificate this certificate will be available online and this will be uh, uh, you can always refer to this uh, when you are showing it to your company right so that's how the overall course works if you are a developer and you're looking to get into the uh, big data world right there what you need to do i mean what you need to learn right your, the skills which you'll require will be either of these programming languages uh, it could be java python ruby right it could be uh, it could be Perl as well, right? I mean, there are a lot of languages supported. By default, I think Hadoop is language agnostic, but then it's written in Java. So uh, a lot of MapReduce design uh, uh, is done in Java and Python. But if you if you are comfortable with any of these languages, you should be good to go. You should understand the Hadoop ecosystem, which means the uh, various tools which are a part of the Hadoop ecosystem. I'll, I'll get to that in a while. Then uh, you should, uh, as a big data developer, it will be expected out of you that you should be conversant with at least one of the NoSQL uh, DBs, right? Which, uh, which is uh, either <clears throat> a Cassandra, or MongoDB, right? Uh, or, or any other uh, NoSQL DB. And then Spark is something which is an in-memory uh, DB in Hadoop. I'll talk about that also in a while. So this this typically is your learning path if you are a developer. So these are the technologies you should be conversant in. Not not uh, now. You need not learn everything in one go. You can you can take your time. But if if you know these things, then you are you will be considered a good. Uh, you will be considered a person who can work on a big data project as a developer. Okay. Now uh, coming to the administration part. So uh, typically there are three three learning paths in uh, big data, right? Uh, uh, there's a developer part, there's an admin part, and then there's a data analyst part. So if you're an uh, administrator, if you come from a, either a DBA background or a Linux administration background, the expectations and the skill sets will be, you should be conversant with the Linux administration. You will understand the Hadoop cluster setup and management. You will also be responsible for 
cluster performance and virtualization right so those, those are the things which will be uh, which will be responsible for and for that i mean two skills which uh, edureka has multiple courses on big data right i mean we'll probably have the largest catalog of big data courses for a administrator these are the courses if you are already no uh, linux administration you can directly jump to hadoop administration if you're not uh, aware of linux administration it is advisable that you should learn a little bit about linux administration before moving into hadoop administration okay now uh, coming to uh, the next uh, path which is a data analyst part right so a data analyst in hadoop is is actually the person who will be uh, analyzing the data uh, drawing meaningful insights of that out of that data maybe say for example if you have a retail data and you want to find out the customer churn and maybe figure out what is the best way of reducing the customer churn churn by the way for the people who do not know means that if i have say uh, 100000 subscribers every month how many are dropping off right so that's that's the customer churn so if you have to do that kind of analysis that's the role of a data analyst you need to understand uh, you you should have a, a good understanding of some of the statistical analysis you should you you will have to learn some machine learning algorithms you also need to understand uh, big data in terms of hadoop right because ultimately though you will not be writing programs in hadoop but you will still be using hadoop you may be using a uh, you should have expertise in r so r basically is a language which is used by most analysts for big data analytics and uh, it sits on top of hadoop if required and you can do a lot of statistical analysis on top of it right and then you need to uh, uh, know have a good handle on some of the data visualization tools so r also gives you a lot of data visualization options and then there's a tool called tableau which i recommend usually you can you can use any other uh, visualization tool as well but uh, that's the tool which i usually recommend okay rishav is saying that what is the scope of testing in big data and hadoop okay so good question rishav so i i what i what i usually suggest is that i mean there are there are, it is more like uh, so there'll be in in hadoop also you will be writing your map reduce program so there's there is a there's something called a mr unit using which you do your unit tests there so that that part is covered in the big data and hadoop course right and as uh, wherever there is a requirement for developers there's obviously a requirement for people who will be doing the qa or the testing so yes there is a lot of scope for people uh, who come from the testing background as well the uh, the typical learning path for testers is all remains the same you may not want to learn say map reduce design patterns as such but then uh, having a good understanding of hadoop ecosystem uh, having a good uh, handle on writing uh, tests around hadoop which will be covered in the big data and hadoop course and then uh, knowing say spark which is the new uh, in memory db there but, and uh, knowing a good uh, uh, having learning one of the no sql dbs i mean uh, mentioned cassandra here but you can as well learn uh, mongo db so typically that's how it is okay so i have a question which says that okay i have uh, 10 years experience i want to get into the analyst path so what is the uh, scope for me okay so see if if you want to get into the big data analyst uh, role right one thing which you need to understand is that uh, analyst should have a good knowledge of the domain which you will be getting into because more than the tech the domain becomes very important so say for example if you come from a healthcare you come from a i mean uh, finance or you come from uh, uh, a retail domain right then uh, there are a lot of domains i mean these days there'll be a lot of uh, unstructured data which you will be getting all these chat records and everything and you'll be doing a lot of analysis on top of it right so so uh, there is a lot of uh, work which which can be done in hadoop and uh, so if you you need to have a good understanding of the domain and then there are tools available r is the foremost tool which uh, the analysts use right other than that in the hadoop ecosystem the tools like hive pig which which are also used by uh, uh, the analysts right so how much time it takes to learn data analyst okay see the time is typically dependent upon the skills you have and how much time you're ready to put in right i typically recommend if you really if you are starting from a beginner level i typically recommend don't rush at least take two three months right uh, uh, give yourself two three months because not just learning the tools you need to learn a lot of use cases you need to try out a lot of use cases from various industries to get the feel of what algorithms have to be applied now if you're a data analyst you need to understand the kind 
kind of analysis you'll be doing so you'll be doing some clustering analysis where you'll be doing you may be working on some customer segmentation kind of analysis which is the classification algorithms so there are various st statistical uh, analysis which you need to do you need to learn that then you need to master the language r you need to get a good hands on on hadoop as well how to connect hadoop with r is something which is, is there so, and then you need to learn a little bit of data visualization because finally what what an analyst has to do is gain insights from that data right so typically it will it, i'll suggest take at least two three months given the fact that all of you are working and you're not going to be learning full time okay i hope this answers your question now there's a question i'm currently working in virtualization support and looking forward to the development route okay so i will suggest I mean, my suggestion will be that getting into the administration path will be very good now it is a, it's a very very in demand thing right now there will be a lot of requirements in your own company for that and i have seen people working across various companies who've moved from support to administration role so i i will suggest that uh, this will be the best path for you so if uh, learn a little bit of linux and then move on to hadoop administration okay then there is a question how old is the big data and hadoop technology and what are its future uh, prospects some top companies based on this technology good question i think uh, it's pretty old uh, you may not have heard about it uh, uh, in the older days but it's pretty old it started with google uh, probably in 2003 4 that was the time duration when they uh, when they were doing their page ranking algorithm and when they, they were getting huge amount of data that's where it all started uh, but then in the recent past right hadoop uh, is the framework which actually made it uh, available to everyone it's an open source framework so a lot of companies are now using it a lot of companies in the domain of finance wherever there is a huge amount of unstructured data flowing in uh, hadoop is used I'll, I'll go into some of the use cases as well as we progress in this session right how difficult is it to set up dev environment for development and testing can it be done in a single machine with basic configuration well i though i'll, I'll cover this at the end of this session but i'll quickly give you a, a sneak uh, uh, view into this so now if you're a developer if you're trying to do development in hadoop you can do it on a single node cluster as well okay uh, i'll talk about what a cluster is don't get confused there uh, you can you can do it in a single node cluster or everything which works in a single node cluster is will work work on a multi node cluster as well but then uh, in a real production environment typically there will be fro ranging from eight node to uh, say uh, thousands of node of clusters uh, uh, hadoop clusters can be found right it's not very difficult to set up i mean if you if you look at uh, the course here uh, we we help you set up the cluster it's and it's actually very simple it's not too much too difficult there are guides available you can follow that you can even set up a cluster on your laptop if you have a uh, at least a 4 gb ram a single node cluster can be set up if you have a 8 gb ram you can set up a multi node cluster as well in a virtualization kind of mode then uh, but if you're if you're looking to typically what companies do the large clusters are set up either on public clouds or private clouds and that also remains the same i mean uh, there is an instruction in this course itself where we teach you how to set up a, a cluster on amazon uh, cloud the aws so it's not very difficult you need, just need to follow, uh, follow the instructions okay so there is a question on machine learning right so see uh, yes machine learning forms a very very important uh, uh, part of uh, uh, if you're looking at a data scientist kind of role which is which actually is uh, i'm talking when i say data analyst and data scientist i'm talking in general about that so as a data scientist what you need to do is that uh, you have a huge amount of data maybe stored across clusters and that data is coming in say for example looking uh, look at any e-commerce website right huge amount of customer data coming in on a day on a hourly basis and you need to gain insights you need to uh, make decisions based on that that okay if this is the kind of customer coming in these are the offers to be shown to them right say for example uh, uh, i'm sure everyone has seen uh, amazon or a flipkart uh, where you see uh, these are the products recommended to you for you or these are the products which customers like you have bought so all that is done through machine learning right that's called a recommendation engine and uh, that's done through uh, machine learning right and there's a course uh, specifically on mahout which is the uh, framework for doing uh, uh, writing recommendation engines which is available on edureka if you're interested you can take up that now there's a question does a de developer role also require domain knowledge well uh, i would say not require but 
any anyone who is looking to uh, write good code right according to me i mean i'm i'm an old man now but i always recommend people to understand the domain right so if you're in the retail domain if you're writing a program for that you need to understand what the, the domain has so that's not a hardcore requirement but that's a uh, that's something which uh, will be useful and recommended for an analyst role or a data scientist that becomes the key requirement right because you if you if you don't understand what you're trying to gain from the from the data then then probably use the usage of tools is you will just become a super user of a tool right now there is a question from jyoti which says how much time it will take to become expert in hadoop as a developer jyoti de depends upon your background can you can you quickly tell me if you have a development background what all languages do you know otherwise i mean uh, it typically i'll say typically a two month time if you're working uh, will be a good enough time to get a good uh, hands on on hadoop right uh, where you will be expected to spend say at least 10 10 odd hours a week right so that that is typically what i recommend uh, for someone uh, and uh, the the way the course works is that you have classes every weekend or if you're looking at a weekday batch if you have urgent requirement you can opt for that as well then there are classes every day monday to friday and in this case there will be classes every weekend three hour sessions where uh, and every after every session it will be recommended that you take up the assignments quizzes and the uh, code whatever code assignments are there you take them up and then finally do at least a couple of projects so and this typically takes a uh, two uh, uh, one and a half to two months six to eight weeks time to actually uh, get that uh, confidence that you you can handle a project now so jyoti if, since you are from a java background i think uh, uh, if you are a java developer then i think learning hadoop will not be very difficult for you because uh, at the core of it MapReduce uh, is done in java so okay uh, so that should be that's how it will be okay i hope that answers your question